Okay. okay, well this is our final talk for this session. Uh, it's going to be graphics from Gamepads, Guitars and Gadgets Galore by John Cruz. Before we get into that, there's just a couple of housekeeping things. First of all, um, if anyone has not collected your free, awesome, brightly coloured Hawaiian shirt, they are at Red Joe. If you haven't collected it, collect it right at the start of afternoon tea because at the end of afternoon tea we will be selling them for $25 each. And if we sell them and there's nothing left in your size or whatever at the end, then it's going to be sorry, sorry. But that's all we can do. Um, okay, so today's talk will have questions at the end. I will be running around with the microphone to get you on the recording. So please, if you have a question, put your hand up way up in the air and just keep it up until I get to you with the microphone. So I can definitely tell like who was the first to put their hand up and all that sort of thing. And once you've got the microphone, ask your question. The speaker will hopefully be kind enough to respond to it if it's a nice question. <laughs> and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so today's talk is graphics from gamepads, guitars and gadgets galore by John Cruz. John is a professional developer with over 20 years of experience. He's, he's currently involved in open source as a core developer and board member with Inkscape, Inkscape, working on more comprehensive integration of little CMS and color management features, tablet enhancements and general UI features. He represents Inkscape with the Open ICC and Create Projects, focusing on shared resources and collaboration with other software. Thank you very much for coming to talk to us today, John. Thank you, and welcome to my talk on graphics from gamepads, guitars, and gadgets galore. I have, let's see, gamepads, guitars, well, one guitar, and various other gadgets. Also, just to see, you know, I know this is the last session of the conference, everyone's worn out, I am. So I brought a couple little footballs to throw at you if you start to get tired or just want a toy to take home. Although, wait a minute. Uh, better internationalize my talk. Okay, I brought a couple footballs to throw at you to see if you're paying attention. So, um, we're going to have some interesting things to go over, hopefully. A um, little bit breaks, a little bit works, showing you oh, the gist of it is that we'll be able to give you an idea of what you can do if you're a software person, hardware person, wh whatever. If you're just interested in this type of thing or maybe just seeing what it can do, that's always a, a good way to find out. But what I'm trying to present is the gist of something to move forward and get going. This is not actually a tutorial, so we're not going to have lots of code and walk through and exercises. It's going to be a little bit faster, but I hopefully have comprehensive speaker's notes in so you can download the slides later or watch the video if you didn't quite catch what you wanted. And we'll see what we can manage to get through. So, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the areas that get covered. I'm going to be giving some high-level, probably incorrect and misleading for all you hardcore people, info about hardware, then some on software, licensing, which is going to be a slightly interesting pick topic in here, but is something we need to pay attention to. Accessibility, which had a surprising impact for what I was doing. On little on collaboration, and you'll even notice I was saying on demo, the hardware's, uh, or actually the software on the update's not working. Things had been, about nine months ago, things had been working pretty well on the input. Now I have to rev to catch up. I thought I was on an LTS, so everything's safe, so none of the core libraries are going to change too much, but we won't get the best uh, multi-guitar support today. But we will be able to go over some of the input, how it works, how the devices go. Just a real quick question for myself, just wondering, how many people here are comfortable with hardware, tweaking it, Arduino, anything like that? Maybe, oh good, a third, maybe a half. How many people are comfortable with the software, compiling something, executing it? Just about the same amount, good. And who doesn't put hardware together or code anything but just uses and uh, likes to enjoy stuff? Oh quarter of the room maybe, that's, that's good, so have some idea of where we are and what we're going to be dealing with. So, first thing, 
on to hardware. So this is going to be high level, like I mentioned, you um, hardware people. You're out there. There's a lot of you. Few too many. That's OK. Uh, it's probably going to be a lot of no-brainer stuff you already know, already are familiar with. Bear with me. I'm going to give it a little simplified to make sure everyone gets covered. Uh, you can sit there and feel free to be smugly amused at me by in your thoughts and come up to me afterwards and explain all the different ways I was wrong because I know there's a lot. Software people. Key thing when working with hardware that you may not expect is it can be tricky. Keep in mind, well, I keep in mind that I don't know any or most of what I should know, and I'm going to discover a little bit of it this time. But every time I do a little bit more, I discover a bit more. So I just, I know that I need to ask questions. That's the main point. And in our community here, LCA especially, there are so many great resources. You jump on the list, find some people, go to the hackerspace, talk to half the people in this room, they'll be able to at least point you in the right direction. And the good news is for you new people, it might not be any harder. It might be easier because you're not going to have any of the bad habits to unlearn, especially us software guys. We're, we're bad about that. So going forward, a little bit about potential devices, things I had lying around, presented what I might want to look at. Everything started uh, by coding support in Inkscape with Space Navigator, which is a six degree of freedom CAD um, let you do twist, tilt, pan, zoom, all sorts of fun things. This was lent to me by Grant, who was very helpful and kind in that regard. And I started putting that in because a lot of high-end graphic professionals, CAD people, they use those, they're good. But once I got done with that, I looked around to see what else might be helpful. You know, most people aren't going to have a $400 US uh, Intuos drawing tablet. You're not going to have a $100, $200 uh, input device like that. But what might you have? First thing I thought of was, well, I had laying around my house your standard handy dandy little USB gamepad. You know, why, why would I care about here? Well, it's got a few buttons. We might be able to use them for something. But more, it's got nice little analog joysticks. Two of them. So you can do a little bit extra. And one of the things the drawing tablet is really useful with is pressure to give you varying widths in your strokes to make them more natural and good. So instead of using a drawing tablet and pressing down harder on the pin and use who work, you could use you know, your regular mouse, hold the joystick in your hand, run it around, and create more natural strokes. I uh, coded that up and surprisingly it worked. It was much better than I thought. So there, just save somebody $300 right off the bat. People like that. Then I started looking around at some of the other devices, the Wii remotes. Fairly easy to hook up. There's good support for the library. A lot of talks have gone on here for how to use them. Guitars. This drawing tablet is actually a Wii drawing tablet. Hey, if I, so if I coded support for the main, I could get base support for all those. A bunch of other things on here. Uh, cameras. I was planning on doing something maybe with eye tracking, which someone else ended up doing, I found out, halfway through this process. I'll point that out under collaboration, too. And then this little thing here, which is a weird thing that came out of our talks last year. I had a little prop I brought with me. I talked to some people. I said, oh, I want to do this. And they're like, oh, yes, you can. So I ended up making a physical color picker that is just based on a little Arduino Leo stick we got last year, little RGB LEDs behind it so you can see it, touch it change your colors. So this will, would let an artist hold it in their hands and pick the colors, have LEDs run behind here to have different sets. I'm at the point now where I need to get what's the proper interface, gestures, all that user stuff, which since I'm not a day-to-day -day practicing artist, I don't know. So I know I need to ask that question. But how does everything work? How do we go? Now for hardware, there's some interesting things for you software people. Again, Hardware guys, you can just sit there and be smug because you know all this. You've been through it. You know. So we have a bunch of these things. Hardware can crash. However, unlike your software, it can crash literally. Like I had gotten a new uh, Nexus 7 tablet. I was thinking of replicating this in just a little Android app so I could have something in your hand. And somebody may not want to buy this, but they might have an Android tablet of some form. 
So I was going to use that. I was getting ready to do it this year, and then it crashed. Literally. Ouch. So there are hazards with hardware. Some stuff can happen to your hardware. In this case, how did it happen? I asked my kids, and they told me they didn't do it. And they're, they're usually generally good about being honest. So well, how did it happen? I think I, I chalked it up to my little cute little puppy dog, uh, Poppy, who is a 120-pound Newfie. Uh, there she is wearing my daughter's classes. She's bigger than my older grown-up daughter. So yeah, she, I'm, I'm a lot more careful about where I set things nowadays and all that. But you, know, you never know what could happen. Good news. In our hacker community, we have a good ethic. You can work around hardware problems. It, you know, if something doesn't work, hack something in. In this case, I discovered that if you get a hub and a micro adapter and the mouse and your tablet suddenly becomes more usable, keyboard, and you're, you're off. So the Smash screen Nexus 7 can still be usable. You can still do some. Unfortunately, it doesn't respond to touch, so I wasn't able to test that tablet. I since got a replacement, and I've got uh, the warranty on that for accidental damage. So we'll get that set. So be aware of that. Another thing to think about is that hardware is physical. There are aspects to it. Touch. If you have a nice flat surface, it will work. If it's rough or grump or, or, or sharp, you might hurt your fingers. All sorts of other aspects to that. So look out. There are several things. Risks in the physical realm, risk to yourself while you're putting it together. Knives, cut yourself. Um, soldering, burns. <laughs> Oh, you will get burned if you start to do this. Just try to minimize them. And then physical implications is that being a physical device, you can cause effects in the real world. Worst case is triggering epileptic, epileptic seizures or other things. If people might know of the Pokemon incident a while back, uh, I can go into that after the talk for you if you're interested. Um, also, vision damage. If you've got lasers, lasers are cool. I saw lots of things here with lasers. Lasers pointing into your eye, not so cool. <laughs> can damage your vision. Even infrared LEDs of the RON spectrum can cause vision damage, so be careful. So just take, be aware that there are risks, take the steps to mitigate them, and you can be good. Next thing, hardware can be tricky. In that case, what do I mean? Well, there's all sorts of stuff that you, as a software person or a newbie, you may not know, you have to look. But when planning projects, remember, among other things, scale matters. See this nice little connector here on the end of my touch screen? I was going to, you know, I ordered one, a couple of these offline in some clearance place. I was going to hook them on up and just run and go with it. <sighs> Except. It's two millimeters. <laughs> two mil okay. So I put an inch there just so that you, actually it looks more impressive to see it versus inch versus centimeters because centimeters are smaller. It doesn't make the, anyway, but you can see. Details will bite you if you're not careful. So look for connectors, physical things that you wouldn't, as a software or a newbie person, you wouldn't know to look for. Uh, among thing, other things, you also, parts might need other parts. In this case, a little breakout board with a connector. I can solder things at the scale on this end. I can't solder onto that tiny little, uh, uh, way too small thing. So just, you might need to get a few more going. Now, hardware can also be challenging. I got a couple little kids' glow bracelets to give away. Um, let's see if I can get... One of these is not quite working. One of them is... Ah! Here's one working. Anyone want a glow bracelet? Anyone? Anyone? Woo! Got it? Okay. No one hurt? Good. I picked light and soft things if you're going to throw anything. This is the challenge. This was on the pack, back of the packaging. Do not attempt to remove the batteries. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Hardware can be challenging in, in different ways. But to summarize, I'd like to say overall, with all the different things you're going to have to keep in mind and stay aware of and watch out for, despite, or perhaps because of all that, hardware can be fun. I'm, I liked it. I'm. I'm unfortunately going to be spending way too much money on parts and on boards and solder and whatnot. But then there are other things to do for hardware. So I mentioned you can have uh, Nintendo Wii's, which this is a nice little nunchuck I got for a current game, but it actually glows in color. Ooh, I have to 
figure out some time if that's software controllable. That's new, I don't know. 3D input, a few other things. You know, mouse. Oh, anyone seen one of these? Just your standard mouse. Useful input for small devices. But then, how many people here have an Android 4.0 device? Over half, easily. Okay. Something came up just the other week as I was getting ready to come here. Somebody did the basic software was what I'm thinking. They wrote something that you put an app on your Android tablet or phone, you put a driver on your PC, and suddenly you've got a multi, um, touch, a pressure sensitive touch screen tablet without actually having to buy a Wacom or something like that. Um, they started it, so I don't have to. It's open source. Open source. If you can't read, this says this pro project is open source. <laughs> so I can now fix it to make it do what I want. So you want to keep aware of things out there. Talk to people, find people, talk to people from hackerspaces. They were the ones who told me, in, in fact, some artists told me, when I was trying to figure out buttons and switches and potentiometers maybe to do RGB, because you know I'm just a stupid software guy, use a touch screen. I'm like, what? That's expensive. We're like, Three to five dollars, maybe. Okay, I can afford that. Cheaper than the switches I was looking at. So, that was a big blast about the hardware, trying to get mindset prep, but I'm not the expert there. There's a lot of people here who are experts on that. Talk to them, find out what you want, go to your local hackerspace, email your closest hackerspace. If you're not close, there's all sorts of community support. You want to get in there. But more of my bailiwick is software. So this is the question you might want to know more about. Uh, my personal suggestion is to keep it simple. How simple? There, there are two quotes I know that I really like. One, if they think you're going crude, go tech. Big bottom line, I love that from a book way back. When they expect high tech, go low tech, essentially. Then. The quote attributed to Einstein, which I actually saw in another talk just the other day here, keep as simple as possible, but no simpler. That's simple to say, not easy to do. <laughs> but guys, go crude, go low tech, just make it work. For example, I was just playing around with some stuff, trying to see if I might want to run sound in the drawing app just to be silly for the demo. and. I've done multimedia in the past. I know all these APIs. I know eSound you don't use anymore. You want to look also know all, um, all sorts of things, all sorts of APIs. Maybe SDL, because that's actually most likely to be very, very useful overall. A lot of the games use that. But for this, that takes a little while to use it properly, to hook it up. And I wanted to spend half an hour doing stuff. So there, yeah, I did a real simple, crude pack. Can anyone see what this is doing? Fork exec A play. I'm just shelling out the command line. I tried it. I can spawn multiple sounds all in parallel, all running at once. Good. Problem solved. Move on. That's what you can do. Simple. Uh, another, I think, good example of simple software is the GFX tablet approach. I was thinking, I'm working on something that is going to have a simple API that can work for multiple things, hot plug added eventually. You had a little bit on the X talk how at the X level this is a little tricky. Well, this other person just decided to solve his problem and just do it. So this is the protocol itself. Very trivial, but mainly clear. He sends out X, Y, and pressure. If it's a button event, he also includes button number and whether or not it's down. And just blast those packets in UDP over the network. No handshake, no negotiation, nothing else. Hey, it works. Actually, and then he had a problem was, you know, if you have different sized tablets or tablets rotate, they might change. He just sends the um, structure as a new type. Set resolution. There. Just an int, some chords, and there you go. That's all you need to do. So, Next question, who here has written any kind of driver? Software driver, kernel level, uh, maybe a quarter of the people in here, okay. How many people feel comfortable trying one for the first time? 
uh, just a bare handful. Okay, in this case, they started with an XP input driver, switched to U input because some, once they open source it, they were told use U input, and here you go. Their, their entire driver, it's functional. People have tested this. I avoided trying putting the driver on my machine just in case it would wipe it before the conference. I, I wasn't going to risk that, but here it is, 140 lines of code. Or rather, the, another unit of measure you could say is this is one Twitter message, message characters of lines. <laughs> so just think, that's all it takes. You might be able to, or you can grab this one and change it. Guess why? It's open source. Has anyone here ever done a Windows driver? Yeah, a couple. Are they easy? Would you do one in an evening? No, 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 oh, no. So that's one thing to do. Simple. It's, it's doable. It's not elegant. It may not hold up. You might need to revise things. That's okay. You can progress. So for hooking up joysticks, Wiimotes, uh, six degree of freedom objects or input devices, all that, what was I going to do? Well, I ended up with a somewhat simple unification of it. So here's my device API. And if you download the slides, you might be able to read that. This is just showing you it's one screen worth of text. That's it, the source code. I've got struck with the number of axes and buttons, a pointer to them. So this is very similar to the X or GTK input that you're, you might have seen if you start to look into this. And then a couple calls added prepare, input thing state, get state. So I have something called a thing. I don't know what it is yet. I don't know what the protocol is going to be. I called it thing. It should work for now. And then at the end, shut down. Or in a little if def C++, so this could work for C or C++, depending on which you prefer and language. And one could write other wrappers for this later. But at which level to do this is a question. So here's one aspect that we need to look out. Who was in the last talk here? Is that um, a third, maybe? All right. In the last talk, they were talking about the X stack and how it works and some of the things and working with input with it. And the way they're going to fix X is to just throw it away. <laughs> They've got Wayland. Just start over. It's been, it's been patched up and hacked on enough so that it's at its level, but they're not going to move on. So we're going to look at where to do it, what level. Um, you input is a step away from X. It's not directly in X, but it's user level input driver. That's handy. Uh, Mid-level, you could try hooking into the GTK or QT or any other toolkit. Or you could go very high level and hook into your application. And there are a few different ways to look, factors to look at there. So, a little specifically on these two different layers. Although two, two, two. Yeah, time for Anyone need a football? Anyone need another football? Oh. Ooh, nice catch. <laughs> All right. Now that we're a little more awake, or I am at least. You input. Like I said, more appropriate than the X driver. Plat still a bit platform specific, but I imagine the Wayland guys are going to try to support that a little more cleanly. Since they're this, a lot of the same coders, they kind of know what's needed and not. And then application layer is, can be more easily cross-platform, but you, then you're not sharing between apps on the same machine simultaneously. So that's a pro and a con right there. A couple things to look at. And so what I was looking at for Inkscape is because we run, run on Linux and Mac OS and Windows. If I can hook something at the application layer, maybe calling one certain library on, uh, on Linux to get joystick and a different library on Windows to get joystick, but hiding it and then putting it all together in that unified, unified API I showed, then whoever uses Inkscape on whichever platform will have the same functionality. And for me, that's a, that's a bit that I like. So, a little dry here nowadays.
moving on to the next main thing to switch gears on to licensing. Who here loves licensing? Uh, two and a half. Who here hates licensing? A whole lot more. Okay. It's painful. Although, ooh, flashy. Anyone need a flashy? Painful, spiky? Uh, no, I'll run it. <laughs> run, 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 run. We go. Everyone looking? Everyone paying attention? Oh. Why? Just because I want to avoid licensing for another minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know it. But, you know, it's there. Is licensing simple? No. Now, if you need more than that, just look around at either most of the people here in this room or just some of the other presentations that go on here. There are some really good ones, different times by different people that can give, fill you in on the details. It is not simple. So can we just ignore it? <laughs> no. Unfortunately, we want to be conscientious people. We want to do the right thing. Even if we think other people are doing the wrong thing, so we can't just ignore it. So in, in general for licensing, whether it's licenses of things you want to use or want to create or want to share, you need to consider it. So be explicit. Relicensing or copyright assignment, those can be a huge pain and really get in your way if you don't think about it up front. By, by focusing at the beginning, you can avoid getting distracted later on. And if, you, if you're not an expert, you can talk to people to find out and find out the different licenses, who knows which ones, who favors which ones, and talk to a bunch of these people. So I like to liken it to, does anyone recognize what this is? This is an illustration of Poe's Raven. And if you're not familiar with the poem, there is a bird at the top here, the raven, comes on in, came in. And no matter what question was posed to it, the raven would answer always, nevermore. So when it comes to licensing, I immediately think of someone in this regard, not a raven though, uh, in case you're familiar with him, Bradley Kuhn. I think he's a good resource you want to speak to at different times. He's a very nice guy, loves to discuss things. But you can ask him all sorts of different questions about the different scenarios and when, which license you should use. And if it, does anyone here know Bradley? Like maybe one or two. No matter what you ask him, he's going to tell you GPL. So there are certain people who are really adamant about a given license or another. Others aren't as concerned. Some don't care at all. Some are flexible for the situation. In this case, uh, most of every single thing I know about Bradley is GPL. He loves it. He knows why. He can. However, that gets us into one question. What sketch are you in? Are you in the parrot sketch or the argument sketch? What do I mean by that? Quick question. Parroting. Does anyone know what I might mean by parroting? No? No? Quiet? Okay. Uh, basically, just simple repetition without understanding, just m mirroring back what somebody's told them. Oh, you have to use LGPL because you must. Okay, VL, VNC, you know, it's like, wait a minute. I, and that's another discussion, should they, should not. On the other hand, y some describe, you want maybe an argument. And in, in some ways, people describe an argument as being a connected series of statements to establish a definite proposition. Yes, some people re notice the reference. You want the difference between these two really matter, I'd say, and you want to avoid those who just fall back into simple gainsaying. So that means we need, I need to clarify this last point here. So licensing, it's simple, no. Can we ignore it? No. You need to be explicit and then talk to people. Uh, one refinement on that for you is that you need to talk to helpful people. So be aware of that. Shop around. See what you can figure out. And then 
helpful people can actually be productive in license consideration discussions. Throw them out there, just don't put up an open ballot and do a completely blind vote on it, because oh, that way is madness. Finally, just take the time to look into the various factors and make some deliberate decisions on licensing. You know, big thing, cross-platform or not, license appropriate, blah, 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 blah. Too much of it. I mentioned some of this. Uh, the, there are many, many talks and resources on licensing. There's a lot of stuff even going on at FOSDEM. There's a whole room where they talk about just legal issues. Ugh. For me, not my thing, but I do have to deal with this. So, for instance, Inkscape's a GPL application. There are lots of drivers I can call from it. If they're GPL drivers, I can use them in Inkscape. But if I'm trying to write my API to work for other people who aren't GPL, might be a little tricky. So I have to keep those possible use cases in mind and weigh them and see and make a good decision. And then I'm going to take a little bit of time on to accessibility. Covering, to cover something that happened while I was in the middle of doing all this. So there are many considerations that start to matter more. Different types of needs. Visual, hearing, communication disorders, mobility impairments, learning disability. There are a lot of things you have to consider when how to do things. Software modularity can help. By breaking apart the functionality of your program, you can tune it up and reuse and fix this. So, with mobility impairments, that's, I'm highlighting that because a lot of people have talked about visual and some of the others, but in this case, I encountered someone who had a issue and they can benefit a lot more from some of the interesting hardware out there. So I thought a lot of this was a lark and I was being silly. But in the middle of doing all this, when I had just changed the UI, I had someone contact me who was trying to set up a friend or a person they were helping with uh, eye tracking software to be able to draw. And this person had Lou Gehrig's is completely paralyzed except for where he can look. And being able to give that back to the person, he contacted the Inkscape forums and said, hey, can we make these connector spots on the paths bigger so that we can use them? Because it's really hard with an eye tracker. And they told him no. But thankfully, because of making it so you could use it from the guitar, which has a joystick for drawing, but it's a little teeny, teeny tiny, very hard to use. So I had just that week finished coding support to make those follow this accessibility theme get big so that you can connect them. And I was able to tell them, yes, not only can it be done, I just did it. The code is right here. We can get you going on it. So. <laughs> So, and in that case, I had just gone in to clean up my code to allow these silly things to use it easier. And that same cleanup was used to simultaneously fix things for unexpected, serious uses. So, that's nice. And kind of moves on a little bit into collaboration. We want to look at that. We want to see what we can do. Try to be a team player. Try to get out there with people. Oh, team. Football? Anyone? Anyone? Football! <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. Collaborate. Get together. Pass it on. Get, be helpful. Main thing, of course, don't reinvent the wheel. In all this, that's what I found, like, with some of the hardware, some of the software, the discussions on licensing, even. You do not want to reinvent that wheel. You, if you can gain from somebody else's experience, somebody else's time, you want to do that. And in this field, you can. Of course, sometimes you really de do need to reinvent it. Like, I had to invent a new API because there were certain ones that were around before. Um, like, I looked for existing APIs, USB, HID, input devices, all that was close, but it wasn't quite what I needed, it didn't quite pull it together, and it was not cross-platform, which is a key thing I had here. Looking for existing projects, I was going to write that Android app, GFX tablet, somebody else beat me to it. I better just use that, that works, that's great. Look for existing hardware, 
talk to people from hacker spaces, you know, use an Arduino for prototyping. Maybe there's something else that's better. Maybe they'll tell you, oh, just use the touch glass. It's, it's simple. It's easy. But if you don't communicate with other people, you don't discover these things. So collaboration is really, really helpful. And hackerspace people, I've not really found any who weren't helpful. Y you come up, they'll at least, even if they're kind of surly and focused and non-communicative as in a general rule, they'll mm, indicate to you what they're doing and let you see. Because if they were really, really, really private, they might be at home. So, you know, a bit more than average, those guys can really help. So, what's next? Well, two things. For me, I have to choose my final set of licensing. <laughs> Which are, API header itself probably can't be copyrighted. Courts have been starting to follow that reasonable interpretation, but I want to be explicit on that. Implementations, if I'm writing an implementation of my interface that hooks in joysticks, and I'm using a GPL library to do that, I have to make sure what I'm doing is GPL above it. I, you know, how things are going to fit together. And so I have to just lay that all out explicitly. And in the past, when I've had some of this come up for other things, especially at work, if I had to do something that there's an available software that's GPL, but I'm going to have to use it in a commercial context because I want my company to do the right thing and use the standards, but they can't use the existing library. I've had to rewrite API or libraries from scratch to implement the standard. So be it. You know, so I, I just have to get the final licensing and plan the pieces and then do the easy and open, more open pieces first. And then the code and hardware details, I think like this. I'm at the point, I've tried all different configurations, physical things. I know how to get it happening and talking and reacting and talking to the computer. Now I have to get it in the hands of some people at Hackerspaces so the artists there can tell us which gestures should do what in different contexts, things like that. You? Yeah, all you out there. Everyone. You. Ah, I got two more. <laughs> you paying attention? Everyone? You, you, you. Get out there and try stuff. Have fun. Participate. Uh, help me with the design on this. I'm, this thing is definitely ready to go. There's certain people already hooking me up saying, hey, you need a circuit board. You're ready to go. <laughs> I was like, well, actually I might be. Software is still in flux, but the hardware is pretty simple, pretty mellow, and can be even easier. But number one thing, bottom line, guys, go out there, have some fun. There's all this silliness, all these things that you can hook in. I mean, we moat. For years, I've used this as my presentation clicker. It's not hard. It took me, an, well, not an hour, okay, a couple hours, because I had to pick the key strokes I had. But that's it. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, various uh, low-level issues were messing up my little playback. Even the audio is not quite playing back with the way I had it just earlier in the week. So instead of trying to break the uh, AV system here, well, show you stuff a little more and I'll be throwing, get, I've got to get on YouTube and throw up some demo videos because people are interested in little bits that aren't quite full. So round up for a few minutes I hope, for, still for questions. John, not a question but more of a comment. With your, with your color palette, I hope you realize that calibration is really, really, really important to, to somebody that's picking a color. The color that they see is what's going to come out. Yes, that, that is a very good point. And if you look online for the archives, I came to LCA Hobart and gave a talk about color management and covered some of these issues. One of the things I can think of is it since this is RGB color projection, the screen calibrators I have can work for this. So we can characterize what this is capable of and do a little more. Sometimes people just want to go, I want the red color or I want the blue color. And if you have these pots filled with your fixed current set, it's easy to switch between them and have them. 
close enough, but you're right. We want to be sure not to mislead somebody about how precise the color is. John. Yes. Um, so have you linked this into your own builds of library and your uh, own builds of Inkscape? So this library you've been talking about, is it actually an independent library from the toolkit? Or is it, are you, you didn't answer which way you were going with that or what the application side interface to that is going to look like. Have you just not gotten there yet? Or um, I'd love to hear more. OK. So real quick, the current state of where this is, I have the API that ha declares a couple of types and a couple of functions that each module would have. I currently have ink my build on one of my trunks or one of my trees. My build of Inkscape will look in the current directory for any SOs, open it up, check for these functions to be present, so deal open, deal sim, and if so, just start using it. Then I have sub-projects that build a shared library to be either use the Wii library or the other, um, the Wii library, joystick well library, or the space navigator library independently. So you, those, it's kind of like hierarchical. So as long as a shared library that exposes this interface is present, it will use it. And each one of those library, individual libraries will probably have different versions of diff using different licensing, if nothing else, because there are different drivers. Hi, just a minor comment. I, I walked in just before you were talking about the, uh, made the comment about Bradley Kuhn. I just thought I might um, just point out that that seems a little unfair, that characterization, because he was actually part of the, the FSF um, group that wrote the, their current licensing recommendation document that also recommends Apache 2, LGPL, a Faro GPL, so it, it, it doesn't just go GPL. Yes, okay. That's, that's, the, yeah. Well, we put on that. <laughs> Bradley's a great guy. He, in when all what, what I'm aware of, he's very, very strongly into promoting freedom, and he can explain to you why. If you have a choice, usually he will explain to any me and or anyone around how GPL does give you the best freedom. However, if you do have considerations, he can tell you about the others. And then, yeah, you're right. There was a little exaggeration there. But the point is, and I followed up with, in his case, he doesn't simply pair it. He does know. And he is really well informed. So he's a good resource. Um, we were running a little bit late, and you had problems with the audio. But if we had five minutes extra, and we had audio, I really would have liked to see the video from the iWriter.org website, because the story behind that project is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the kind of other people, just recommend like remember that website and go there. It's about the graffiti artist who gets paralyzed and gets enabled to actually create visual art again. <laughs> I just had a question out of left field. What is the rabbit for? Oh, what is the rabbit for? My kids send these little stuffed guys with me when I travel to keep me honest, to make sure that I, I'm doing a good job and they keep an eye on me. <laughs> Warning, not a question. Um, you input is uh, now somewhat deprecated and only works with X. It won't work in things like text mode. Mm. Uh, there's also uh, F -te FDEV, e -V -D -E -V, which is the Linux kernel uh, input uh, device event subsystem. If you write for EVD, it, FDEV, it'll, write, it'll work for any application. And I've mm -hmm. written my input devices with uh, FDEV. Good, so that's a follow up. We, we can both go and help this other project because it's open source. He's, a, he's already switched drivers once, but it's only 140 lines. It's not too far committed. Do we have one final question? All the way, I think up the back was first, sorry. Just a quick comment. I managed to get the GFX tablet thing working, and it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, there it is. Just in the span of the talk, he was able to get it down, get it set up, and get it working. So let's go help him switch it to the good input. Okay, well, I think everyone would like to join with me in thanking you for a really interesting 
talk. It was great to see the actual demonstrations as well. So thank you very much. <laughs>